Welcome to week six of Silly Goose Tarot. Each week, I randomly pull three cards. The cards this week are the King of Wands, the Four of Wands, and the Empress. We're starting off with the King of Fire himself, the King of Wands. Um, Spooky, what are you doing? Oh, I have a Spooky between my legs. She's decided that she likes the little tent I made. Pookie. All right, well, there's a cat right in there. I decided to try something different this week. I put little moving backgrounds behind the photo or behind the drawings to make it more visually interesting. Let me know if it's distracting or if it's a good touch. I'm not sure myself. Keeping attention spans is a difficult, <laughs> a difficult feat these days. Anyway, the King of Wands represents leadership, motivation, creativity, generosity, achievement, and direction. This sucker gave me a really hard time. I think I probably struggled with him the most out of any of the other cards so far in the series. I usually draw the cards on Tuesday and Wednesday, but today I finished him Friday morning. <laughs> but I like him now that he's done, so it's worth the struggle. <laughs> He kind of symbolizes to me like taking leadership in in your own life to be in like that active role as opposed to letting you know life kind of passively pass you by i've heard people say that like the kings of each suit represent having control of that suit so the king of fire uh fire represents like energy and passion so this king uh can wield that passion and energy and direct it towards the future and the ambitions that he has. I know depending on life circumstances and the media you watch and the people you hang around with, uh, life can seem pretty bleak sometimes. So it's important to sometimes just turn out the noise from everything around you and to focus like inwardly on the vision that you have. Um, even if it's a little idealistic or, you know, overly optimistic, like if everything went right, what would you want your world to look like? It's much easier to, uh, you know, set a course, set a path when uh, you know what direction you want your life to go in. In the past, I struggled a lot. I had no idea what I wanted to do, what I wanted my career to be. You know, everything, there were so many options, it seemed like overwhelming. And the thing that I really wanted to do seemed so out of reach for me that I think I just tuned it out altogether. So that kind of left me aimless for a pretty long time. I tried many avenues of things that I wasn't passionate about and I would constantly lose interest and I would try really hard and burn out and I just felt like I never got anywhere. And looking back, I think that might have been the universe's way of saying, no dummy, you have to go back that way. Your path's over there. But it wasn't a waste because I picked up a lot of skills along the way and grew as a person immensely. Very different vibes from me right now and me 10 years ago. <laughs> Being in like a King of Wands type energy is having that outward future vision um, for your life and the things you're passionate about. This is the first ever artistic project I've been able to keep full steam ahead on for more than a month. And that is really great progress. <laughs> Every Sunday I go to bed and I think about what random cards I'm going to draw on Monday. And I get really excited because there's so many possibilities. Friday when I'm done with my video and I print out all the cards. And then I get to add the cards to the stack of my other cards that I've finished. It just like... Oh, there's like a sense of like accomplishment every week, even though it's like little drops in the bucket. I just feel like, like, you know, you can really feel and see the progress. Each card by themselves may not be like, you know, um, an artistic masterpiece, but seeing them all next to each other is like just so 
gratifying. I don't know if that's the word I'm looking for. I just feel motivated even more to complete them. Like every time I, I draw another card, instead of burning me out, it like lights the fire even bigger. I used to be the type of person where I, I never felt like I could finish anything. I used to struggle with that a lot. Like I, I just like couldn't be consistent and it bugged me. It like, it really, really bugged me. I think the reason that I'm able to actually make progress on this project is one, I'm actually passionate about everything involved with it. You know, making videos and making tarot cards, both something I'm interested in. Two, I put a lot of like self-imposed limitations in there on purpose. The limited color palette, the um, subject matter, and the, the weekly time limit really, really helped. I think the key to kind of having fun for me is just keeping it low stakes in my head. You got a week, draw some silly geese, we'll see how it turns out. <laughs> The goal is just to finish, and there is so much more ahead when I'm done. Moving on to the Four of Wands. I unfortunately do not have a lot of footage of this card because uh, the, the screen recording software crashed. Um, so, and I didn't save it. <laughs> ah. This card symbolizes celebration, jubilation, community, teamwork, completion, progress and initial success. This card to me is all about celebrating the small wins and appreciating the people and things that you have in your life right now. Don't get caught up in the what ifs or what could have been and don't get caught up in the what was. Today is a new day and the fact that you're alive and sentient is enough of a scientific anomaly to celebrate every day you're alive. <laughs> This weekend in America is a holiday weekend. It's Memorial Day and there are going to be a ton of different community events all around in every town. My mom is the type of person to just like be in a lot of volunteer organizations. So this weekend we're doing a kite flying event for kids. It's a cute little event where they provide free kites and snacks for the kids. Um, my mom buys a bunch of blank white ones and I have my alcohol markers and uh, we do a make your own kite day type deal. A lot of the times it ends up with me drawing whatever the kid requests in the black marker and then they get to color it in. We did it last year and I ended up spending most of the time drawing different Spider-Men, <laughs> different versions of Spider-Man, and he's like the most intricate of all of the superheroes. Well, not all of them, but you know, he's not like necessarily easy to draw. <laughs> but I know every year I'm going to get better and better at drawing Spider-Man. It's worth it though. It's so fun. I love seeing the kids smile and get really excited that they have like a free event to go to. Also, usually I'm like stuck in the, the pavilion the whole time, but seeing all the videos of all the kites flying is also like super adorable. So I highly recommend you go volunteer at some community events this weekend or, you know, in the future. It doesn't have to be this weekend. Last, and definitely not least, is the Empress. She's the third card in the Major Arcana sequence. She symbolizes femininity um, in things like fertility, expression, creativity, beauty, nurturing things. <laughs> Spiritually, women are the figurative and literal doors into this world. So um, it could mean that you're either birthing an actual thing or perhaps a birthing a plan or like you're nurturing a new idea or a business. The Empress symbolizes how important feminine energy is in all of our lives, regardless of the gender you are. The description in my first ever tarot deck was all of nature is connected and you are part of that whole. Take good care of Earth's creatures and receive their love in return. Key concepts, nurturing, caretaking, 
Earth Mother. <laughs> You're so cute. I've always felt really connected to the Empress card. Um, I kind of have a Disney princess view of looking at the world. Especially now that I'm a mother myself. Um, when you become a mother, you're, you're, you become like extra sensitive and your empathy dials all the way up. <laughs> I can't even kill bugs anymore. I, uh, I just capture them with cups and then bring them outside. I just don't think that I have any more right to be here than they do. And as silly as it seems, those insects are also somebody's baby. So I cannot, in my good conscience, cause them harm. I mean, sometimes on accident I'll do it, but in general, no. I think it's easy to forget in modern society that us humans are one with nature and we are, in fact, just animals ourselves. There is an enriching world of nature all around us that we often ignore. I've been really making a point to like get outside more. I'm homebody through and through, but morning walks with Theodore, um, unplugged without any like music or listening to anything, just outside walking and just listening to the sounds of life around me and lots of birds has been a great way to start my morning. I'm definitely a believer in what goes around comes around. Basically, the energy you put into the universe is the energy you're gonna get back. So if you face the world with a smile, the world's gonna smile back at you. If you face the world with your fists forwards, all defensive and aggressive, the world's probably gonna be defensive and aggressive back. It's all about the vibes you put out, and I feel like the best way to learn that is to have pets. <laughs> you can have a wonderful, loving, trusting connection with an animal that cannot comprehend language. I don't take my pets for granted. I try to respect their bodily autonomy and the stuff that they want to do, and it makes me happy that they can relax and feel safe around me. Now that it's nice out, I've had to do some like, you know, lawn maintenance and yard care and gardening and weeding. And uh, I used to hate it, but now I've kind of found a enjoyment in it. I think it's good for the human psyche to get in the dirt every now and again. You get to see a bunch of different insects and creepy crawlies of all types and Remember that there's a whole ecosystem, a whole nother universe living right beneath your feet. Earlier this month I was weeding and I pulled out a whole toad. <laughs> it must have been like around the roots of the plant I was weeding. And yeah, it was a whole toad. That surprised me. But to be fair, I probably surprised it a lot more than it surprised me. He must have been waking up from hibernating and I just yanked him right out of the ground. <laughs> Poor guy. I've since seen a lot of toads on the property and I make sure that I don't run them over while I'm mowing the lawn. I try to put as much love as I can out into the world around me. It's the best way to make a difference when you don't have any money to spend, you know? <laughs> There's a quote that when you love something, the best thing that you can offer is your presence. Putting your time and care into something is more valuable than gold. So don't feel like you need to achieve anything or be a certain way or do a certain thing. You're enough just as you are. And all you need to be valuable is right there within you. And don't forget to direct some of that nurturing energy back to yourself. Whatever you put your time and energy in will grow. And the more you grow, the more you have to give to those around you. So it's a win-win. Especially if you're a parent or a caregiver of any sort, make sure that you're taking time for yourselves. Doing things that are enriching to you, that may or may not include the thing you're taking care of. <laughs> Honestly, having work to do 
that is just for myself and that has nothing to do with my household or family is very nice and very fulfilling to me. I definitely feel like putting your life on hold, quote unquote, for your children is a mistake. You can live your life simultaneously while raising children, even though it, you know, you may have to modify some things. It may take longer, you know, you don't have enough time to work on things throughout the day. So you just have to kind of commit yourself to a, to a more meandering, longer path. Even though motherhood has come with its own, you know, set of challenges and quote unquote restrictions, I do not regret motherhood for a second. It is true that you physically go through like a, a change after you become a mother. It's like called matrescence. And men also go through a similar change. Shane and I talk all the time about how parenthood is like the best thing that's ever happened to us. I feel like I'm able to do so much more than I ever could before. And I have this new sense of purpose and meaning in my life that I didn't have before Theodore was born. In a lot of ways, birthing and nurturing a new life has given me the confidence to actually start living my own life. And with that, week six is complete. Here is the, the cards that I finally finished. Woo! It's 10 p.m. on Friday and my deadline is tomorrow. <laughs> I cut it pretty close this week, but I am pretty happy with how it turned out. Look at all of them. Look at these. Look at them. Ah, it's so exciting. I am 23% of the way there. I did the math. I thought it'd be fun to finish off the video with some flower oracles. Uh, this week's boom, buttercup. Be ready. The best is on its way. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye. I don't know why I, so, I struggle so much when I actually start filming. It's like I have all these ideas in my head while I'm doing stuff, like, you know, doing my hair, and like stuff I want to talk about. But the second I start filming, <laughs> it just all falls out of my brain. And it's like, nope, never mind. You don't know anything. You, you don't want to say anything. You have no thoughts, which is silly. It's very silly. Why am I struggling? Whatever, I got a good thumbnail, so. If I waste the outfit, so be it.